Nightwish's third album, Wishmaster, which is an album that people argue is their best work to date. I've seen many comments say, Yeah, man, this is their best album, and everything after it was when it went downhill. Dude, that song is Wishmaster good. If it isn't as good as Wishmaster, it's not worth my time. This is where the songwriting started to shine, and when they started to become noticed worldwide. This is an album that in most ways is very similar to his predecessor, and it continues the power metal sound. But what's different about this album is that while Oceanborn focused more on speed and heaviness with less emphasis on atmosphere and melody, Wishmaster is the opposite in a sense where it emphasized more on the melodic sound and a little less on the speed. Because of the shift, that's why many people love this album the most, because it seems to have the perfect balance between the fast power metal sound of Oceanborn and the melodic sounds of later albums. Because as it would turn out, this shift towards more emphasis on atmosphere would be the ongoing trend with later albums. Hence, Wishmaster would prove to be the reference point to how many fans felt the albums by Nightwish should have been balanced. First song on this album, She's My Sin. This is a song that I used to not care for as much, especially as an opener to an album. It seemed a little underwhelming to me especially comparing it to Oceanborn, which opens with speed. This one is a mid-tempo song that builds up in speed and power towards the end, which is one of the reasons why I feel the song will still hold up. After every fair listen afterwards, the song seemed to get better the more I listened to it. Ironically, I actually prefer Flory Anson on the song compared to Tadia, and I didn't really love this song until I listened to Flory's rendition of it on the Showtime Storytime Number two, The Kinslayer. Ah yes, this is the song about the Columbine shooters. Which you need to remember, this song was written not too long after the shootings happened. And this album was released a year and one month after the shooting, so it was still fresh in everyone's mind. Therefore, this is one of the darkest songs on the album, probably one of the darkest songs written by Nightwish. In contrast to the opener, the vocals of Kinslayer are lower, and yet still give a powerful punch in the sound. This is definitely one of their best songs, and it's a shame that it hasn't been played since Tadio was kicked out. Cover Me. Here we see the romantic side of Nightwish first being presented on this song, and it's another favorite of mine simply for the vocals and the beautiful harmony that accompanies it. The intro with the flutes is one of the reasons this song intrigued me, and the rest surely gives a tear to my eyes. When I first bought this CD, it was actually during a Christmas season, so the harmony definitely made me think of the holiday tunes because of it. And I'm also glad that this song has survived in the setlist rotations all through the years, and it never disappoints no matter who sings it.
fourth song, Wanderlust. This song has had the brief return to the power metal sound, and it's a good song. It's a great mix between the guitar and keyboard interplay, and the chorus makes the song worth listening to. Don't get me wrong, it's a wonderful song about the journey of life, but this falls short simply because it's overshadowed by some of the bigger hit tracks on this album. The next one, too, for Tragedy, here's a soft ballad that people either really like or they just don't care for. And me, I'm on the don't care side, simply because the keyboards and vocals are there, and for sure it may have the same kind of flavor of the other ballads as before, but it lacks the hooks and atmosphere that made Sleeping Sun so beautiful and fantastic. Because of that, it's one of Nightwish weaker songs. And I usually skip it for that reason, just so I can get to that next song, which is... Wish. Mas. Dar. Two words. Hell yeah. Just knowing I'm going to talk about this song makes me pumped. This is easily one of their best songs, period. Everything about it. The epic vocals, the guitar, keyboard harmony. And what makes it for me is the complex drums and double bass that makes this song just as bombastic as it is beautiful. It always puts a smile on my face every time I listen to it. This is a song that when people go see them live, they think, Oh, I hope to God they surprise us with this song. Please play this song, Nightwish. And maybe the core band members are tired of playing it, but they make entire stadiums of 50,000 people extremely happy with this song anytime they play it. And I will definitely say it sounds good with any vocalist they've had. As for the next song, Bear Gray's Misery, well, you gotta think, after Wishmaster, which is one of the album's high points, it makes any song right after it easily forgettable because you're thinking, wait, I want to hear Wishmaster again. Or you're thinking, are there any more awesome songs like the one I just heard? I want to skip to that kind of a song. Because you go from an extremely awesome, complex, bombastic, heavy song into a simple song that has little much to offer, this song suffers that kind of obscure forgetfulness, so it's rather stale and just seems to feel like it's filler. Is it a bad song? That's hard to say, but I usually skip it because it's sandwiched between two amazing songs. And the other amazing song is Crownless, a highly underrated song. It is a shame that this song is forgotten and that this song has only been played live once in their entire history and there seems to be no recording of it to understand why maybe the band feel it didn't translate well live who knows the song is awesome i love the speed of it the keyboard solo and impu's riffs and the solo make it stand out listening to it makes you think man i wish they kept that power metal sound in their later albums why didn't they write more songs like this they were good with songs like this Track number nine, you have Deep Silent Complete. Now this one almost suffers the same fate as Bear Gray's Misery for the same reason, but it's a lot better as a standalone song than Bear Gray's Misery. It's somewhere between mid-tempo and fast, and the notes and harmonies are nice, but many times it can get a little stale. Why this song was released as a single, I'll never know. 
It was probably because it was more simple and easy to dive into, but when you're surrounded by much better songs on this album, it doesn't hold up as well anymore, and it may... And it probably risked this album not being listened to altogether because people probably thought, oh, this is Nightwish? This is their best song? Well, screw that. The next song, you have Dead Boy's Poem. This is a song I used to get turned off from simply because of the very low and soft vocals at the beginning. I thought, oh God, another sappy ballad. And I never gave this song a fair chance. Believe it or not, it was actually a live rendition sung by Annette in 2009 that got me to love the song. And now it's another favorite of mine. I just love the way the song picks up in tempo as the song progressive, and the epic approach is what makes it a standout power ballad. You the verse, so make us crying, though without tears. For I've given this its strength, and it has become my only strength. Comforting home, what does that? Chance for immortality. But being wanted became a thrill. I never knew the sweet piano writing down my life. song on this CD, the second of the two epic songs, Phantasmic is another long forgotten favorite. And based on the From Wishes to Eternity DVD, I don't know if this song was ever played live all the way through since only the third part of the song seems to be found on YouTube searches, often paired with Elven Poth, which I'm okay with because it's the best part of the song anyway, and the fantasy theme song fits well when paired with Elven Poth. Makes it a good extended outro in a way. For Phantasmic, this is where Nightwish started the trend of having one epic song longer than eight minutes on each CD. Here you have the song get off to a rousing start, slow down in the middle, and then progress and pick up at the end. Just like many symphonic pieces in general. And it's the way this song is composed that makes it very grand and showcases all their talents. So they're not just power metal, they're melodic, they're symphonic, they're neoclassical, they're operatic. And they could be a level above everything else musically at times. I love Phantasmic. It's long forgotten in terms of in the set list, but it's a hidden gem in a way. Wishmaster is both a solid power metal album and a solid symphonic metal album. The speed of Oceanborn is still there, but the more atmosphere approach and emphasis on melodic songs is what it added something new at the time and ultimately seemed to lead Nightwish on that path. It's a highly recommended album by all means and shouldn't be as overlooked as it is nowadays in the setlist. In some ways, Wishmaster is their best work, but I will say that in other ways, their best work still came later. Hey, I love the power metal. I love the fast songs, but like I've said many times, I do like that Nightwish never released the same album twice, and I don't always care for artists that do, and I don't respect them as much. But many fans started to get turned off by the shift in sound, starting with the album after this. Find out why on the Century Child Review. <laughs> 